Okay, so currently reporting from Hustler Casino, where I'm gonna be covering two sessions that I recently played here. The first was a 2550-100 that I played on Wednesday. The second was a 100-200, often 400, that I played on Friday. If you guys are not familiar with Hustler Casino Live, they have games every day, Monday through Friday. Friday being the biggest game, and it's not a game that I've played too many times, so this is an exciting uh, session. Today is actually Sunday, so it's been a few days since uh, those, those two games happened, but uh, I haven't had a chance to recap what went down. So I think you guys are in for a treat. There were a lot of interesting hands and some big swings. So without any further ado, let's jump into the first stream Wednesday, 2550-100. All right, everyone, here we go. Starting off the day with some 2550 100. And in the first interesting hand, Henry opens on the button to 300, and I look down at ace seven of hearts in the third blind. Good candidate to raise with, I think, especially against a button open. So I make it 1500 to go. But Henry's not interested in that size. Instead, he opts for $4,300 another raise now he opened from the button and i raised from the last blind and i think henry knows that i could be doing that with a fair amount of hands and because of that he might be raising himself with a wide variety of holdings perhaps not often but often enough that i'd like to battle back in this instance and i think suited aces are good candidates to do just that however ace seven in particular is probably the worst one to do it with so me uh, deciding to raise again right here is essentially just a punt, if I'm being honest. That being said, punting on the stream is not the worst idea ever, but if you guys are looking to apply any of this to your local games, you could probably just never do this with Ace-7 suited and you'll be just fine. <laughs> anyway, Henry calls after I make it 11,200, and we go heads up out of position to a flop of Queen-5-4 with not a heart in sight. Not ideal, but Henry will still have hands like ace-king, ace-jack suited, etc. And we would benefit from folding those out. So I continue with a small bet, just like I would if I had, you know, an overpair or ace-queen. 6,500 to go. Henry makes the call, and we see the nine of spades on the turn, bringing in a possible flush. Given all the money that went in before the flop, I think it's unlikely either of us would ever really have a flush. But I think if either of us did have a flush, he'd be the one that's more likely to have it. So I decided to check it over to him. Henry checks it back, and we see the deuce of hearts on the river. So I've got ace high in a dream. We could just give up, or maybe put in a bet and try to get in a fold like ace king that floated the flop or a hand like pocket tens or pocket eights seems very optimistic on my end and i think the better play is probably to just give up but just to follow along with the theme from before the flop i decide to continue barreling and showing some aggression i think about how much i would bet if i had a good hand and i think twenty thousand is the magic number right around half pot so that's what i do Unfortunately for me, Henry's got a hand that I was afraid of running into. Pocket Kings with a spade, no less. Definitely not one that he's gonna fold. And sure enough, after a few seconds, he makes the call. And we end up losing a $75,000 pot when I really didn't need to. But that's how it goes sometimes. I am not perfect by any means. Shortly after, this hand goes down where I raise it up with King 10 suited and get called only by Art in the straddle. So we go heads up to a flop of 10 deuce deuce with two hearts. He checks it over to me, I've got top pair, so I bet 300 bucks. Looking back, I wish I would have checked this back or bet bigger. Not really sure if a small bet makes a ton of sense, but anyway, I bet small, and Art now check raises to $900. I'm not going anywhere just yet, so I make the call. 
but we don't get a great turn card. It's the nine of hearts. So now if he was check raising the flop with a flush draw, for example, we are losing to that. And if he's got a hand with a deuce in it, of course, we are in some serious trouble. Art now bets $800. And I'm not loving this situation, but it's a small bet and we are still beating some hands he might play this way like small pocket pairs or perhaps worse tens. So I do make the call and we get the ace of spades on the river. Expecting him to check with any medium strength hand at this point, but he does not check. Instead, he puts in a bet of $7,200 over the size of the pot, indicating that he's either got a flush, a full house, or a bluff. Well, in the moment, I figured probably best to just fold but then I got this little idea thinking to myself if he's got a flush it's going to look super strong if I jam over the top essentially just representing pocket tens pocket nines and pocket aces all of which I would certainly play in this manner I guess also ace deuce suited is a hand that could play this way and I think, like I said, if he's got a flush, it's going to be really tough for him to call if I go all in. I have some removal to full houses myself with a 10 in my hand. And uh, it's tough to find bluff candidates in this situation, but I think king 10 without a heart is a good one. So targeting flushes, I decide to jam all in. Once again, unfortunately, I am running into a very strong hand as Art has pocket nines for a turned full house. Was really not expecting that. And in fact, he didn't even call right away, so I thought it would work. But sure enough, he does eventually call, and we lose a $50,000 pot this time. Things are not going well to start the night. The good thing about bluffing relentlessly, though, is that when you finally get a hand, you tend to get paid off. And that is what I'm hoping will happen here, as there's a race to 300. Nick calls, and then Art makes it 1600. I've got pocket kings on the button next to act. Great situation. I raise it up to $5,000. Everyone folds, and when it gets back to Art, I am expecting him to at least call, but he doesn't. In fact, he raises, yet again, $14,000 to go. <sighs> kind of frustrating. I already feel like perhaps we are up against pocket aces, especially against a fairly tight opponent, but what am I going to do, right? This is late position versus late position, and he knows that I could easily be steaming, so of course he would do this also with ace king or pocket queens. I make the call, and we go to a flop of jack-jack-5. Expecting him to bet small with all his hands, and that's what he does, $5,000. I make the call. I think maybe raising once in a while might even be acceptable, but this time I just call, and we get a terrible turn card, the Ace of Hearts. So now we are beating even less hands. Art continues betting this time. I don't even remember how much, like some amount, but I decided to just fold right away as I now have one of the worst hands I would ever have in this situation. Luckily, we are playing a round of stand-up, so Art has to show his hand, and we get to see the good news that we folded against pocket aces. In a weird way, it's cool that we didn't lose a ton, but still kind of frustrating to uh, be running like this, finally get a hand, and I am no good. But like I said, at least we don't lose the absolute maximum. So nothing is going right today. Let's see if maybe we can reverse that with ace 10 on the button. Straddle is on, so I open a 500 and get two callers. Three ways to a flop of 985 rainbow. When it checks to me, I decided to just check it back, and we get some good news on the turn. The 10 of diamonds giving me top pair, top kicker. However, Brown Bala now bets out for $3,000, which is nearly double the size of the pot. Art gets out of the way, and when it's on me... I'm already not loving the situation considering how big he bet. He's essentially only representing hands that are better than mine or just a bluff. But of course, we are beating bluffs and I've seen Brown Bala punt off before. So I make the call. Deuce on the river should change nothing. But of course, as you guys can see, it changes everything as he now rivers two pair. I'm expecting him to continue betting both with bluffs and good hands, same as he would on the turn. And sure enough, he does bet $12,000 again going for this ridiculously big sizing. Always tough to play against big bets like that. I've got a good hand to call with and I have seen him bluff a lot. But at the same time, it doesn't look like I'm going to fold whatever I called on the turn with. And I think he knows that. So I don't suspect he would be targeting a, uh, a fold from me. <sighs> Again, a tough spot, not really sure what to do. I think it's almost better to call with ace 10 than it would be with an over pair since we have some removal to two pair combinations. That's what I'm most worried about. Uh, but yeah, in the end, I decide to toss in the money. It was pretty close. But sadly, this time I choose incorrectly and end up losing to the 10 deuce of spades. Nice hand, brown baller. As you guys can tell, Today is not going well. I've shown you four hands and I have lost four hands, but I've got the perfect remedy for this, pocket aces. 
In this one, Brown Bala opens to $1,000. Action gets to me in the big blind, and I raise it up to 6,000. And as you guys can see, it's the dream situation as my opponent has got pocket kings. Of course, he's gonna raise again, makes it 21,000 to go. That's a pretty big chunk of his stack, so when it gets back to me, I think calling is fine, but I decide to just get the money in. Don't really think there's many hands that he's making it 21,000 with and then folding for an additional 44. And of course, he calls right away. So I turn it over. He's got pocket kings. Good news. He wants to run it twice. I say no problem. But what do you know? On the first run out, we lose to a river straight. Yeah, unfortunate. Second run out, at least, we end up holding on, and as it goes, we end up chopping this pot. What I thought was an awesome situation, aces versus kings, yields us only $125. Oh well, at least it's better than losing, right? So yeah, I showed you guys five hands. I chopped one of them, I lost four of them. Not ideal. Let's get back to real time me and get into the next session. Right, so as you guys saw, that did not go very well for myself. I definitely didn't play very well, didn't run very well, and uh, tried some big bluffs that didn't work out. Usually when all those things combine, you're gonna lose a lot of money, and that's what happened for me. I ended up losing like around 85,000 that day. But like I said at the start of this video, we're gonna be covering two sessions, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to get back in this uh, big Friday game. So. No more waiting, let's jump straight into the 100, 200, 400, and I'm gonna try to get inside as soon as possible because it's freezing out here. Let's go. Okay, so last session did not go very well, but today is a new day. I've got ace nine, I raised it up to 500 in this 100-200 uh, game, I get three callers. So we go four ways to a flop of nine, five, six with two hearts. I've got top pair, top kicker, as well as the backdoor nut flush draw. Not the worst flop ever, but it's a board that's gonna be better for my opponents than me, so I check it as does everyone else. Four ways still to a turn, which is not great. The seven of hearts, putting a one liner to a straight out there, and also giving me the nut flush draw, so I guess it's not all bad. Dentist Dave, however, has turned himself a straight flush, as you guys can see, not something you see every day. He wisely bets his own hand, $2,000 into the middle. Now it's on me, and I wonder, can we get away with a raise and then a big bet on the river to hopefully get him to fold a straight? At least that's what I think he's got, since I've got the ace of hearts and I don't suspect he would play a flush this way. That's what I decide to do. I make it $8,000 to go. Dentist Dave is not interested in folding his straight flush. He calls for 6,000 and we're off to a river, which is an interesting one. It's the eight of spades. So now if my opponent had a straight on the turn, he most likely is playing the board, unless of course he had 10, eight all along, in which case this is just gonna be a disaster. But when he checks it over to me, I think we can represent flushes. I would definitely check the nut flush draw on the flop. So of course my raise on the turn and a big bet here on the river would indicate that I've got five hearts. But like I said, Dentist Dave has got a straight flush and he's probably not interested in folding that. Pot is around $18,000. I decide to bet 25,000. If he's got a straight and folds, great result. If he's got a flush, he's gonna call. That's the way I'm thinking about this. What I didn't expect is Dentist Dave to check raise all in. Since I've got the ace of hearts, I just did not see that one coming. But of course, after I fold and he turns over his cards, it all makes sense. Still though, I end up losing like $30,000 in the first hour of the show, and it seems like it's all going downhill once again. Hopefully we can turn it around. Next, this one comes up where the $400 straddle is on. I open it up to 1,000 with 8-6 suited in the cutoff, and now Double M re-raises to 4,200 from the big blind. Action's back on me. I've got position and a suited gapper. Probably close, but we're pretty deep, and I like my chances when it comes to trying to flop something good. So I put in the money, and we go heads up to a flop of ace-9-8 with a club. Double M continues for a small bet, 3,300. And now I'm looking at my hand thinking, is this a good bluff candidate? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I lean towards not really, but I've got bottom pair and some backdoor stuff going on. 
like a backdoor straight or flush possibility type of thing. And if I had a set or two pair, I would definitely want to be raising. So got to have some hands that I'm bluffing with as well, right? Isn't that what they say? I don't know, but that's what I decided to do this time. I raised it up to $10,000. I'm thinking to myself, if Double M has a top pair type of hand, it's going to be pretty tough to hang on across three streets. But we'll have to see because he makes the call. Turn card's not ideal. It's the deuce of diamonds giving me no hope for either of my draws. But when he checks it to me, I'm going to stick to the story that I flopped two pair or a set, which I could certainly have on this board. Pot is around 29000 I decide to bet the size of the pot, $28,000, just like I would if I did have one of those strong hands. Double M doesn't seem to love it, but once again, he is not convinced and makes the call. So we're going to need some help on the river or perhaps to fire one more big bet. It's the Jack of Clubs. I guess that does improve 10-7 suited, which I might have once in a blue moon, but most likely I would just call down with a hand like that. Double M checks it over to me, and now we have to decide between just checking back and giving up, most likely losing to ace-king or ace-queen type of hand, or going for it one more time. You guys can probably guess I am not going to check back. So, pot is around $85,000. I'm going to keep pretending I've got it. I put in a bet of 88,000, hoping that we don't run into ace jack. When he does not snap call, it seems that he does not have ace jack. Instead, probably just a big ace, which I do expect him to maybe fold at least often enough to attempt this. Double M considers his options for a while, seems to go back and forth between putting in the money or letting it go. I'm trying to look like I'm not suffering inside, but of course I am. Luckily, eventually he does fold and we get this one through with the flopped bottom pair. But I got to tell you, I don't think it was worth the elevated heart rate. You know, I'm just now realizing that I've been bluffing in most of these hands during this vlog, but I swear I don't choose to. I feel like the hands just sort of come up and I do what I think is best. Sometimes a bunch of bluff opportunities present themselves and you just got to roll with it, I think. You know what's not a bluff though? Pocket aces. Well, at least not pre-flop. That's what I've got in this hand, and as you guys can see, Dentist Dave has got himself pocket kings. A great hand, but not this time. Sorry, Dave. Once again, we are in a dream situation, aces versus kings. Let's see if we can avoid chopping it up like we did in the previous session. He opens it up to 500, I make it 3,000. He makes it 15,000, quite a big raise, and I'm not gonna mess around here. He's got something good, or at least that's what it seems like. So I make it 45,000, and after some thought, he makes the call. So plenty of money left behind, and already $90,000 in the middle. Looking for a clean board, please. I don't wanna flop a set. I don't even wanna see any picture cards out there, just keep them low. And sure enough, that's what we get. It's 964 with two hearts. Pretty much a perfect flop. I guess if I could have it my way, I'd prefer for it to be a rainbow flop, but that's all right. Beggars can't be choosers. This isn't rocket science. I've got aces, and I think my opponent's got kings or queens, so I put in a bet of $50,000. Dentist Dave does not look too happy. He asks me if I've got pocket aces. I, of course, do not respond. Just gonna wait for him to figure this one out. And what he wants to do at the end is announce all in for his $144,000. Of course, I call right away and show him the bad news. And just like that, we are playing a $379,000 pot. In case you guys are not familiar with this channel, that is by far the biggest pot I've ever played in my life. I think the second biggest was like 240, 250. So this is a lot more than that. I didn't even realize it at the time, but we have nearly $400,000 in the middle and two more cards to come. Dentist Dave wants to go twice. I am more than okay with that when the pot is this big. We hold on the first board. Second board, however, brings the queen of hearts on the turn. And that means Dentist Dave needs one more heart to make a flush, in which case we would once again chop versus kings when holding pocket aces. Of course, a king would also help him out. <sighs> it's never easy, is it? I'm stressing out. Looking at the dealer like, please, Lauren, don't do it. Luckily, she does not. She puts down the eight of spades. That's going to be a clean run out. And we end up scooping this massive pot. And just like that, we are having a great night up around $180,000. Moving right along after that delightful hand. In this one, I straddle to 400. Charles opens to 2,000 in late position. Dentist Dave calls on the button. And I've got pocket eights. Could raise once in a while, but I decided to just call. And we go to a flop of king eight five with two hearts. You guys know what that means? 
I've got middle set. That's right. We are officially on a mini heater here at Hustler Casino Live on a Friday night. Action checks the dentist, Dave, on the button who bets $4,000 with his nut flush draw. Can't blame him, but I'm going to check raise this one. If he's got a draw, maybe a king queen type hand, pocket fives, all that, I don't suspect he's going anywhere. So I make it 16000 to go. Charles releases his pocket jacks wisely. Dentist Dave is not in the folding mood after that previous cooler. He makes the call, and we get an okay turn card, the nine of clubs. That does complete seven six, which is the most obvious straight draw on the flop, but we're still gonna have the best hand more often than not, and we can continue to charge hands like top pair or flush draws. So I do decide to continue betting. Right around half pot, $18,000. Dentist Dave once again makes the call. Looking for a clean river card. No heart, please, dealer. But what do you know? We get the dream card. It is a heart, but it pairs the board. The nine of hearts. Wasn't even considering that when I was thinking of good cards on the river. What do I know? That was actually the best possible one as it gives my opponent the nut flush and, of course, me a full house. He's got around $40,000 remaining. Pot is like 75 k so no choice for me but to go all in. That's what I do, and once again, poor Dentist Dave is in a nasty cooler on the wrong end of it, and uh, it's against me. kind of sucks to run bad against the same guy multiple times in one night. I know I've been there, but it's just part of the game. Luckily for me, I was on the other end of it tonight, and sure enough, after a few minutes, Dentist Dave does make the call, and we end up winning a $156,000 pot, suddenly having the best session of my poker life up around a quarter million dollars. And with that, we move to the last interesting hand of the night. Straddle is on once again for 400. Alex opens an early position with queen nine of diamonds. He makes it 1300. And I look down at pocket kings next to act. Running hot for sure. Raise it up to 5,000. Now action gets to Mike in the third blind. He's got pocket eights and it's kind of a weird spot. He decides to cold call the 5,000. I guess that makes some sense. Alex is now getting a price he calls as well, so looking for a clean flop. At least we've got position, but it is three ways. Jack 8-3 with two spades is not exactly ideal. I feel like either of my opponents could have hands like pocket jacks or pocket eights, maybe even pocket threes once in a while. So I think it's one of those classic way ahead, way behind type of situations. When action checks to me for that reason, I decide to exercise some caution and check it back. Don't want to get check raised on this kind of board texture. So we're off to a turn card looking for a good one, but it's not. It's the nine of hearts. Bad to worse, I think. It does introduce some possible straights, two pairs. I guess also pocket nines improve. So when Mike leads out for $5,000, and Alex folds, I am gonna do nothing except call. Definitely not loving my hand at this point, but of course can't fold after checking back the flop. River is just, I mean, come on, how much worse can it get? The seven of spades, flush draw gets there, straights come in, two pairs all over the place. At least Mike now checks it, I'm happy to just check it back. And we end up losing not that much against his flop set of eights, only a $25,000 pot, could have been a lot worse, I guess. But yeah, that was the last interesting one of this session. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. This was a great sun run. Ended up winning more than I've ever won in a single session. So uh, yeah, that's how it went. Right, so that Friday session was a lot better than the Wednesday session. In fact, ridiculously better than any session I've ever had because in a matter of like six, five hours, I don't even know how long we played, but long story short, I ended up winning over a quarter million dollars in a single day. That is by far the biggest win of my entire life and my best uh, result on stream, which is kind of cool. You know, it's, it is really exciting obviously to win that much money, but make no mistake it's not always uh fun and glory because up until that friday session i was on a downswing of like 200 and something thousand so in the end you know it kind of all evens out still pretty cool to win a quarter million dollars in just one night not something i expect to uh, accomplish very often if ever again but yeah for now i'll take it as always, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. I think this was probably one of the most fun ones so far just because of the sheer ridiculousness in results. But yeah, uh, no plans aside from keeping this going. I'm gonna continue to play here around once a week and hopefully enter more fun spots. And uh, you know, fingers crossed that in the end, 
things work out in my favor. If not, you know, it's still fun to play here at Hustler. The games are wild. And on that note, I'm gonna head back inside where my private game is currently running. Which, by the way, if you guys are interested in jumping into, shoot me a message on Instagram. Link is below. We let uh, new people play like pretty much every weekend. You know, it's a rotating cast and it's always a fun group. So, like I said, if you uh, maybe want to jump into a 2550 game here at Hustler, hit me up. But yeah, that's it for today, guys. As always, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. And until next time, good luck at your local tables. Peace.